Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Julie Winkle Giolani from South Pasadena, California. How are you, Julie? How are you doing? I'm very well, Meher. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. So Julie is a champion for workplace growth and development. She believes that everyone deserves the opportunity to reach their potential. And she supports organization and leaders who want to make that happen with keynote speeches, consulting, and training. She is named by Inc. Magazine as top 100 leadership speaker. Julie's in-person and virtual keynotes and presentation offer fresh, inspiring, yet actionable strategies for leaders who are interested in their own growth, as well as supporting the growth of others. Julie, thank you for being here again. So my first question for you is, I know that your recent book uh, titled Promotions Are So Yesterday, Redefine Career Development, Help Employees Thrive, which launched, I believe, during March 8th. Congratulations. So can you tell us more about your finding and was there anything surprising for you that you can share with the audience? Absolutely, yeah. And maybe just to step back, let me uh, set the table by talking a little bit about the problem as I saw it and then the solution and the surprises there. So the, the problem from my perspective, and you probably find it too, is that despite the fact that organizations and managers are investing really heavily mm -hmm. in terms of career development, there are systems and processes, um, meetings that are going on, there's, there's genuine effort that's been undertaken. And yet, despite all of that, career development remains one of the things that's most dissatisfying to employees. Yes. One of the major reasons they leave, the bottom of the engagement survey, time and time again. And so I have really come to the conclusion that a lot of this dissatisfaction, mm -hmm. a lot of the disappointment, a lot of the angst around career development it traces back to the fact that we have these deeply embedded images and expectations in our psyches, and they're completely unrealistic, and yet they continue to play out day in and day out. So, for instance, when I say to you, you know, what image comes to mind when you think about career development? What image comes to your mind? Ladder that I'm going up, ladder. Yep. And you're in this business thinking about this stuff day in and day out. And yet the latter comes to your mind, just like 99 out of 100 people. Yeah. Despite the fact we know organizations are flatter, there are fewer layers, it's more organic. Despite the fact that our relationships with work are changing, you know, the, the great uh, reevaluation that we've been in over the last couple of years has caused people to think about what work means to them and how yeah. work needs to work better for them. Despite all of that, mm -hmm. we rubber band back to this picture of the latter. Yeah. And so no wonder there's such dissatisfaction. So it's really um, clear to me that the workplace has changed, careers have changed, Definitely. but career development hasn't kept up. Yeah. And so that's really what sort of set me off on working on this book. Mm -hmm. And I believe you always talk, uh, you know, I read an article that you talk about the seven C's, which is the core of this, uh, your final keynote. Tell us more about that. Absolutely. So the C's are all part of the centerpiece, kind of the heart of the new book. Um, and it's all under the umbrella of what we call the multidimensional career framework. Mm -hmm. So over the last 10 years of keynotes, training, talking to everybody I could get my hands on around what career means, how people want to grow, what's possible in today's workplace, I formulated this hypothesis, this, this model with seven alternatives to that classic climb up the corporate ladder. Yeah. And we did a validation study, laid it all out in front of folks and just said, you know, prioritize these things. 
what's most interesting to you? We did that with 750 uh, folks worldwide. And the results were absolutely stunning mm -hmm. because what came back was that people in aggregate in the study were more interested in all of those other dimensions, all those other C's. They were interested more in those than in climbing the corporate ladder. Mm -hmm. So the other C's are things like um, competence. You know, we think about growing our skills and abilities and Gosh, we need to do that given how fast the workplace is growing. Yes. Connection. Mm -hmm. There's that expression, it's not what you know, it's who you know, which mm -hmm. I think is overblown, but the network, the connections we have, the relationships, the community, the visibility, yeah. that drives career development. Mm -hmm. um, things like challenge. Managers are really good at giving people challenges as a way to stretch their capacity and to grow and learn. Mm -hmm. But there are some seeds that are a little bit more under the radar. So contribution, for mm -hmm. instance, that natural inclination, desire we have to make a difference, to be of service, to leave things better, to live on purpose, that was the number one most interesting dimension of all. Is it contribution? So managers who are is it contribution to the organization or contribution to the community they're living in? Uh, in this particular context, it's contribution in the context of the organization. Mm -hmm. So it's about stepping up and being willing to do more, to make a difference, to step into the void, to take on the problem, those sorts of things. And, you know, that's, that's a natural need that we have. What the book gets into is how can we use that for the purposes of development? All of those experiences are rich classrooms, if you will, right. for being able to build new skills to enhance one's ability. So how can managers make it reciprocal? So as I give more, I'm getting more. Yes. Number one, most interesting dimension. And to me, that is such a hopeful message for managers everywhere. Mm -hmm. they, they can do that. They can say yes to, to that with an employee. A couple of the other Cs, maybe not on everyone's radar screen, confidence. Mm -hmm. Not having confidence is a major um, risk uh, when it comes to your career development. And we're all, 70% of us, I think is the number, will have that imposter syndrome during our lives. Yes. Sometimes to build your career, to grow your career, you need to grow your confidence, your sense of, I got this with yeah, my I work. Do. I can, I can show it. up and predictably deliver. Yeah. And that's career development. There's also the idea of contentment, which I have to say, when I talk about contentment, I see eyebrows kind of raised. Contentment isn't complacency. Mm -hmm. It's an acknowledgement that we're going to be in this workplace for 20 30, 40, 50 years. Yes. It can't be a hard driving, you know, sprint. Yeah. There are times when we have to take the foot off the gas and we have to cultivate that sense of ease and joy and yeah. balance and meaning. And there gro there's growth and development in that. Gotcha. And then finally, the seventh C is control or uh, choice, sorry, which is about control, autonomy. So timely right now as people are wanting more flexibility around mm -hmm how, where, when they work. And again, growth and development is available as we expand people's choice, decision-making and that kind of thing. And then the eighth C is climb, you know, just happens to be a C as well. <laughs> the thing about climb is managers and employees, they have no control over that. Yeah. They totally control all those other Cs. And do you think that COVID shined on some of those C's, you know, flexibility from home or commitment or confidence that they can work from home? Absolutely. I think these last couple of years have really caused a lot of soul searching. Yeah. You know, we have started thinking about, is it worth it? You know, I've talked to parents who were accustomed to being at the office 12 hours a day, suddenly they're home and they see the baby take those first steps. Yeah. They're not going back to not being more present. Yeah. And so we have to, that, and that's what I mean by our relationship with work is changing. Yeah. We want work to do different things for us. And these alternatives to the climb are some of the jobs that work, that work can do and ways that we can 
um, gain greater satisfaction and grow and develop in the process. Yeah. Those are great insights from your book, uh, Julia. I really appreciate it. And I will put the link to everyone who wants to buy the book uh, below in the comment section. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis. So kind of a journey with us. You can like all the videos, share, make comments. So tune in tomorrow for another great question with Julie.